Hey friend Talk a little bit this morning about being sincere Over in Philippians 1, 9 to 11 It says, In this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. You know, sincerity is fundamental to every virtue of religion. Uh, we must be sincere if we're taking it serious. Actually, it's proof that we are taking it serious when we are sincere in the way we live our life and the way we follow the commands of God. Uh, it's absolutely essential in a right relationship with God that we be uh, sincere. You may be thinking that basic to everything that Christ has taught is love, uh, and that's true. That is very true. Uh, but the Scriptures tells us that even love can be insincere. Uh, people can tell you they love you and, and, and not uh, show it and not act it and, and not love you. So even more basic to Christianity than love is sincerity. We must take God's word and what we do for God seriously and be sincere in it uh, in spite of the fact that there is not recorded one single place in the New Testament that Jesus ever spoke the word sincere. Think about that. Not one time did he ever speak the word sincere. But now in many places he talked about the opposite and condemned the opposite of sincere. Uh, the word sincere or form of it, it only appears in the King James Version of the New Testament uh, nine times. And in the uh, Old Testament three times. And again, I say it never was used or spoken by Jesus. The actual meaning of sincere was uh, in reference to to judge something or to uh, prove something. Uh, back in the times of old, when things uh, in shopping areas and things of that, when people had goods uh, and they would go about in these uh, areas to look at goods they couldn't see them because they didn't have the lighting inside they didn't have electric lights so what they had to do was take them out into the sunshine before they bought them look them over and if they found them to be what they represented or was to be represented they said that they were sincere uh, and the uh, merchandise withstood the test it, it was said to be sincere and that's how the word came about to be used and so you might be thinking that uh, if this is the most basic virtue of Christianity why was it that Christ never used this word sincere well I want you to think for a moment of, of what Jesus most frequently denounced and what he was against it is the complete opposite of sincere, and it is hypocrisy. It's being unsincere. It's being uh, totally uh, unsincere. And it's interesting that this word, hypocrisy, or hypocrite, or a form of it, was used 26 times in the New Testament, and Jesus spoke about it himself personally 23 of those 26 times. Originally, the word hypocrite was a good word. We don't consider the word hypocrite to be any good word today, do we? When you think about the word hypocrite, we automatically associate it with something that's bad. What we associate it with is something that someone claims to be and they're really not. Well, that's the original word came about uh, when uh, in the days before Christ when there was no printing presses books were not readily available to the public so uh, copies were, were rare they were expensive I'm not just talking about the Bible I'm talking about a lot of other books that people were writing and and so what happens was you get these people that would go around and put on shows sort of like 
people go to the opera today or they go see a play or, or whatever the case. But these people would come around and they would read from these authors books city to city. And they may spend days in a city at a time. And so consequently you'd get all of these different people portraying the actors in these books or what these books were written about. Well, the, it came to be known that since these people were representing something other than their own self, they called these folks hypocrites, which was good. Everybody knew about that they weren't just telling their own personal story. They were living the life or the book that someone else wrote. So they were pretending to be something that they weren't being. What it actually is, is they were really actors, I guess. You know, they were portraying something that they really weren't. When you turn the TV on today and you see actors that are, are acting in movies and stuff, they're not portraying their actual life. They're portraying something else. Uh, but during these early times, they, this word hypocrite uh, became a word that was known, and it wasn't bad at that time. But as time went on, it became uh, begun to be used against people who were doing things and appearing to do things that were not uh, the case and not how they lived their life. Uh, Christ was often heard saying, do not as the hypocrites do, or woe unto you hypocrites. Uh, he referred to them as appearing beautifully outward many times and within full of uncleanliness. Uh, a hypocrite is not the kind of person on the inside that they portray to be on the outside. Uh, Jesus teaches us not to be a hypocrite about our faith, but to be genuine in our faith. Well, Jesus didn't directly use the word sincerity, but he denounced its opposite vigorously and in the most scathing terms. Many people don't like negative lessons. They don't like negative preaching. Most prefer the positive approach. I like the positive approach the majority of the time. Uh, but in this instance, Jesus used the negative approach. He didn't use the positive of being sincere. He used the negative about don't be a hypocrite. And he used it many, many times. There's a lot of play acting and pretending and deceitfulness going on in virtually every aspect of our life today. In politics, in business, among family members, even among churches. Uh, even though we would like to think it isn't as common uh, within and among church members as it is with other areas of life, um, but I think many times that's just wishful thinking because hypocrisy has a hold on every aspect of our life. I think one of the most, uh, or one of the charges most commonly lodged against the church is that I would, I would go there if you invite someone or, or I would attend, but there's just too many hypocrites over there in that church or in any church. When people like to use that as an excuse. And then you know what? That may be true. I'm not saying it's not because we're human beings that people make mistakes. There may be hypocrites in all churches, and I suspect there probably is. I suspect that's very true. We have every right to expect a Christian to be sincere, though, don't we? If a person calls themselves a child of God and a Christian, do you have a right to expect that person to be and to live up to be what he claims to be? Absolutely. We have every right to do that. It would be foolish to try to deny or even justify uh, that there's not hypocrites among the church among every aspect of our life, but it's equally as foolish to judge all of God's children by the act of one or two people. Uh, wherein and wherever we find it, insincerity is to be recognized for what it is. It's not good. It's something that's evil. Uh, there's nothing about religion that is of any value if it isn't uh, categorized by genuineness. You must be sincere in your activity with God. Uh, when Jesus was asked what was the first commandment in the law, and we always like to go back to that, don't we? What did he say? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And that is the beginning place 
and the beginning place is where we have to find our sincerity. Love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. We rule out other aspects and things that are bad in our life. We want to be as sincere uh, as we possibly can. It's difficult to imagine how a person could love God insincerely. Why would you want to even go in that direction? Uh, when we talk about God, uh, but can it be done? Can you actually love God in an insincere way? Uh, yeah. I believe in the last verse of Paul's letter to the Christians in Ephesus, he said, Grace be with all them that love our Lord sincerely. So I believe even by that statement, there can be people that love God insincerely or serve God insincerely. Uh, that very statement implies that there were some that were only pretending to love God are not serious about loving God. Well, how can we know if our love to God is really sincere? What do you think? How can we know? You know, there's an easy way. There is a simple way to know if our love for God and our service to God is sincere. It's a very simple test. Uh, Jesus said over in John chapter 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's an easy test. If you're sincere, you're going to keep the commandments of God. That's going to show your sincerity, show your love for God. Uh, it says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. That's how we show our sincerity to God, by following his commandments. Uh, Jesus asked his disciples over in Luke chapter 6, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So how can we say Lord and call him by Lord if we don't do what he says and don't follow the things that he says. We must be sincere. You know, there must have been people that followed Jesus whatever, for whatever reason, but they weren't sincere. Uh, so many people try to convince others that they love the Lord by many different ways today. And I'm not saying that these things are bad. Uh, you know, people like to really openly portray their Christianity. They like to wear uh, a lot of different religious ornaments and things of that. And I'm not saying that those are wrong. I, was, I think that a lot of times these things are good, that it portrays that you are the person that you should be. But what I am saying is don't wear those things and don't pretend to be a Christian and don't portray yourself to be a Christian and tell everybody you're being a Christian and not live that life because you portray something other than sincerity. Uh, Romans 12 and 9 says, let love be without dissimulation, which means let it be without prejudice, let it be without hypocrisy. In other words, let it be genuine, let it be sincere. Uh, we must never, never spiritually lay our hands on a brother or sister's shoulder and say, I love you, and then turn around and stab them in the back? Is that being sincere? People do that. It's done today. It's done with, within the church today. I'm not saying it's done in this congregation. I'm saying in the body of Christ. It's done today. And you know, we, we can't be sincere about our love for another person just thinking that we won't do harm, harm to them. I, you know, you say, well, I'm sincere because I don't have any intentions on doing anything bad to anyone else. But we must express our sincereness not by just mere not doing anything, but by doing those good things things. 1 Peter 1.22 says, see that you love one another with a pure heart. You know, our intentions will shine through. Uh, and it goes on to say fervently. Why? Because that's the Christian way. That's God's way. And if we're going to serve Him sincerely, then we have to do it His way. Why? Because it's the best way. It's the best way. Wouldn't it be great if we had more fervent, unpretended love from pure hearts in the world today? Certainly it would. No one would have to pretend. No one would have to do anything. It would be great. The Bible also says we must be sincere about our worship. You know, Jesus spoke of those who weren't sincere. Over in Matthew 15, 7 and 8, 
It says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths, and honoreth me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. In other words, they were going through the motions of worship, but it really didn't have any meaning to it. They were just along for the ride, or for whatever reason, it really didn't have any meaning. Jesus told the woman at the well that true worship must consist of two essential things. You remember what it was? Spirit and in truth. Those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. If either is absent, the worship is not correct. It's not sincere. The truth part of it is doing it the way the Lord says, uh, but some people don't think that's important. Some people think that I can choose to do it any way that I want. Others don't see the importance of offering worship with the right spirit. Uh, this is a... Descriptions of those who are not truthful and sincere. Philippians 3, 18 and 19 says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is, the, is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For many walk, of whom I told you often, you know, there's people that pretend to walk with the Lord. There's people that pretend to be Christians. There's people that say that they're Christians. It says, whose end is destruction. Sincerity is the basic virtue of Christian faith. How can we neglect something so important? Um, sincerity is a very, very important part of the Christian's life. But I don't want anyone to fall into the mistaken notion that sincerity alone is sufficient unto salvation. Because there's a lot of people in the world today that are sincere about what they believe that may not make it into heaven. Many have been led into that that are sincere. Uh, they're mistaken in the direction that they travel in life, uh, physically and spiritually. We had a wonderful, wonderful lesson this morning in our Bible study about Saul of Tarsus. Did you think he thought he was right in the direction of travel and the life that he was leading when he was going out and rounding up Christians and killing them and then uh, persecuting them and throwing them in, into prison? Absolutely. Was he right? No, but he thought he was right. Uh, he, he was sincere in what he was doing. Doesn't make it right. Sometimes we are sincere in what we're doing, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Sincerity is very important and even e essential to uh, acceptable and meaningful religion, but it isn't the only essential ingredient. It must be there. We must seek to follow the teacher uh, and his teachings. It's his approval that we have to win. It's not someone else's. Whose approval do we really seek in the end? Who are we going to stand before one day in judgment? It should be the teacher's approval that we seek, isn't it? And that sort of reminds me of a story that I read about this uh, musician who gave a performance and, and afterwards he was commented by the commentator as, as saying, you, you gave a wonderful performance. Everyone stood and, and clapped, yet you have a tear running down your face. He said, yeah, but there was one person who didn't stand up and clap. And he said, well, you've got all of these other people that did. Why, why worry about that one? He said, but that was my teacher. You know, we seek for the teacher's approval. We seek for God's approval, not the approval of this world. We have to be sincere to God. It will be to our sorrow if by pretense or, or hypocrisy or deceit that we manage to draw the approval of the whole wide world and don't get the approval of God on Judgment Day. We must be sincere. One thing's for sure, we will never gain His approval by saying one thing and doing another or pretending to be one thing and being another. Uh, we will always have problems with the person we see in the mirror every morning. You know, I don't think I ever look at myself in the mirror and say, you're where you need to be or you're perfect. 
because I'm not. But I think it's an ongoing work for the rest of my life. I look in the mirror and I say sometimes, I like where you're at, but there's a lot of room for improvement. And I think we need to have that attitude that there's always room for improvement as in our life. Uh, it is impossible to build a relationship with others and with God while putting on a front that doesn't include genuineness or, or sincerity. If you can't depend on my being what I seem to be or I you, then we have nothing sincere on what to build. And it's the same way with God. If God cannot depend on us to be sincere in our faith and our belief and our actions as His children, then we have nothing in what to build upon. Uh, I hope that you're sincere in your relationship with God and that I hope you're here today and you're a Christian that is faithfully serving God. But if you're not a Christian, I just want you to know how important it is to not take that matter lightly, but to take it seriously and, and sincerely, that it's so important. Uh, God tells us that we're to hear the Word of God, we're to believe it, we're to be repentful, confess Christ as the Son of God, and be baptized for the remission of sins. I hope you can understand that God wants us to be sincere. He doesn't want us to be hypocritical. He wants us to be the best that we can be and follow His commands and do His commands and keep His Word. He also wants us to have a home in heaven. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, I certainly would like to extend this invitation to you that you may know you'd have that home in heaven because one day we'll all stand before God and we'll give an account. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, please consider obeying the gospel today. If you are a Christian and maybe life has gotten in the way, there's no better to come, time to come back to God than today. If you've got a need, please let's stand and sing this song of encouragement and use it as an invitation to the Lord. I can resolve no